in an earlier video we showed that the maximum signal power is given as follows where P max is equal to the voltage open circuit voltage divided by 2 multiplied by the short circuit current divided by 2 and this occurs when RL is equal to RT as we show here and here with this example that we'll calculate. We also note that V max is equal to the open circuit voltage which is equal to VT and the maximum current is equal to I short circuit current equals to VT divided by RT. Also shown here are three curves the plots of V over VOC shown in red, the current I over ISC shown in blue, and P divided by P max also shown here in blue are normalized to the maximum available signal levels so that it, the range varies from 0 to 1. The plot of the normalized power P over P max in the neighborhood of the maximum shown here is not a particular strong function of RL divided by RT. In other words, changing the ratio RL over RT by a factor of 2 in either direction for the maximum reduces the ratio of P over P max by less than 20%. On the other hand, the normalized voltage, V over VOC, is within 20% of its maximum when RL divided by RT is equal to 4. And this is similarly shown for the normalized current, I over ISC, that's also within 20% of its maximum when RL divided by RT is equal to 1 fourth. So in other words, the engineering purposes, we can get close to the maximum signal levels with load resistances that only approximate the theoretical requirements. Now we'll illustrate what we just discussed with this example. So here we're given a voltage source of 7N equivalent of 2.5 volts and a resistance or 7N resistance equal to 60 ohms and RL is equal to 30 ohm. Now remember this is for an adjustable load but here in this case we have an RL of 30 ohms. So V max is equal to VOC which is equal to VT which is equal to 2.5 volts as RL approaches infinity and that I max is equal to VT all over RT which is equal to 41.7 milliamps as RL approaches zero. P max is given as VOC over 2 times the short circuit current over 2 and that's equal to 26.0 milliwatts when RL equal RT which is equal in this case 60 ohms. Now when RL is equal to 30 ohms we have the following we have the following VL is equal to 30 over 30 plus 60 times 2.5 or voltage divider or 0 0.833 volts which is smaller than our 2.5 volts RL is again 30 ohms for the case of IL and that's just simply 2.5 volts all over 30 plus 60 ohms which is equal to 27.8 
milliamps, which is smaller than our 41.7 milliamps. And then for PL, that's just VL times IL, and we have 23.1 milliwatts. So here, the power delivered to this 30 ohm load is nearly 90% of the maximum, despite the fact that the Vmax and Imax is a lot bigger than our VL and our IL. Remember, the maximum signal levels just derived are for a fixed source and adjustable load resistance. This situation often occurs in communication systems where devices such as antennas, transmitters, and signal generators have fixed source resistances such as 50, 75, 300, or 60 ohms. In such cases, the load resistance is selected to achieve the desired interface conditions, which often involves matching. Matching the source and the load implies and applies when the source resistance RL is adjustable and the Thevenin source resistance RT is fixed. When RL is fixed and RT is adjustable, then the equations that we derived here point out that in the maximum voltage, current, and power are deli delivered when the Thevenin source resistance is zero. On the other hand, if the source circuit at an interface is adjustable, then ideally the Thevenin source resistance should be zero. We'll see later on that the op-amp circuit approach is ideal for this case.